Hi all, I'm Avneet and today we're going to go ahead and talk about setting up a JMS cluster on JBoss. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and briefly talk about what we're going to discuss in this presentation and then we're going to go ahead and have a look at those configuration changes and of course do a brief demo on it. So to start with, the first and the very important change that you have to do is to switch the JMS persistence from hypersonic to Oracle or to any other transactional database. With hypersonic, you will never be able to successfully configure a JMS cluster. All right. So, some of the prerequisites when you config, you know, when you change from a hypersonic to Oracle or any other database, is to create a schema on that database. Once you've done with that changes, you got to go ahead and modify the JBoss JMS messaging configuration files. So in those configuration files, we have to give parameters like the peer ID of each node and of course, we have to specify the password for JMS. Once, once you've done that, the cluster related configuration for JMS is complete and the only thing remaining now is to define a queue in a cluster scope. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next session. All right, in this session, I'm already within logged in on my Linux box. I have a cluster up and running. Okay, here you see, got two nodes up and running. One is listening on port policy port 02, the other one is listening on port 01. Saying that, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about what it takes to shift from hypersonic to Oracle. Alright, so in your node, like I'm using uh, node 1. Inside node 1, I'm going to go ahead and go inside deploy messaging directory. Inside messaging directory, I have a file by default called hsql db persistence service.xml. I'm going to go ahead and either remove or you know rename that file and then I'm going to copy Oracle persistence file which is available within the sample so where are the samples so within, if you go under the JBoss home directory under docs under examples under JM, you have all these configuration files available for use so you see Oracle persistence readily available for you. So all you do is you copy this file and take it to the messaging directory. Once you've taken this file to the messaging directory, the only change that I gotta do in is basically change the, the name in here. So by default it is gonna be default DS. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert that to Oracle DS so that I know I'm using Oracle as a data source. Once I've changed all the references, all the references within this file, for example, this and anywhere in this file from default DS to Oracle DS, I'm going to save this file, then come back to the deploy directory. Within the deploy directory, what you're going to see is I have a file that I create as a data source file which has the Oracle connection where I have to persist the message. So within the Oracle DSXML file, again, this file can be copied from docs, example, data sources, where you will see an Oracle DSXML file. And all you got to do is just define the user ID and password in this file with the connection string. Okay, so once you've created these two files, you've successfully moved from hypersonic to Oracle. Of course, you got to comment out those hypersonic files. So as I said, just to cover it one more time, you gotta go ahead and remove this file, this file, and in here, you gotta go ahead and remove this file. Of course, you have now have Oracle Persistence and Oracle DS files on your JBoss. So you successfully moved from hypersonic to Oracle. So once you've done that, you go ahead and start modifying these configuration files for messaging. The two configuration files that we have to change is messaging service and messaging JBoss fields. Note that the demo that I'm going to do and the server version that we are right now on is 501 EAP. 
I would like to stress this point well before in advance that in 5.1.1 EAP and 5.2 EAP messaging JBoss beans.xml has to have an encrypted password for the JVM user which is the user for JMS and messaging service has to have a plain text password so in my configuration you will see a plain text password but if you are on 5.1.1 or 5.2 EAP you ensure within this file you have the encrypted password and how to encrypt that password you just go to the Red Hat side and there is a lot of uh, support information available on what command to use within uh, the uh, common logging jar file what, what class to execute within that to encrypt your password Okay, so we are going to look at what changes we have to do within these two files so in nesting service.xml file what we have to do is we have to define a server peer ID which is always has to be a numeric number and a unique number to each node cannot be an alphanumeric generally you keep it as the same number as your clustered app server node is uh, node is assigned to for example if I have a cluster of four servers and my app server one is peer id one then even for the JMS I'll use the peer id as one the other thing that you have to do is of uh, course by default sometimes what you see is the password is not listed in this file so you have to ensure that you go ahead and make sure that the password is available in this file this is always commented by default so you gotta uncomment this out and put in a you know, password and of course remember that you go ahead and put in plain text password in this file but by in the other file from 511 EAP and 52 EAP you gotta use the encrypted password the other file is In this file, all you gotta do is just ensure that you have put in the password right here. And that too, in 501, plain text would work. If 51, in 511 and 52, plain text would not work. So you gotta make sure you put the encrypted password. Once you do these changes, you've successfully configured all the changes which are required for JMS Q to be in a cluster. The only thing now remaining is to define a queue and define it in a cluster scope. So a quick example on what we have to do for that is this. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file. And there you're going to see I'm define two queues. And both the queues, the configuration is, is the default configuration. The only addition is this attribute is added, which tells that, hey, you know, that you're you're defined in a cluster scope and the cluster scope is true and this configuration this queue is going to be present in on all the nodes all server nodes which are member of a cluster if you want to define a queue in a cluster you got to make all the changes we have talked about in each and every node okay so once you've done this test queue is now successfully configured in a cluster scope what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick test just to see whether if I push message on node 1 can I see that message on node 2 and for that I'm going to go ahead and go to my win directory where I have the login enabled so this is my node 2 alright even before node 2 just to make sure you know when both my nodes are up just remember node 2 is running using port policy 02 node 1 is running using port policy 01 ok so I am on node 2 right now I have a node 1 as well this is the log for node 1 right I created a small sample program which is all it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and uh, you know connect to my machine 1199 so port 01 is for node 1 guys right and it's going to post this message on node 2 all right so i'm going to go ahead and bring up the log file this is node 1 this is node 2 guys remember
just gonna refit this window so that you know we can see as I execute whether the message comes or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this program. And here you see on node 2, I've got the message back. Alright, so that was a quick demo on uh, whether we were able to successfully configure a game as cluster. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support and we'll be glad to help you out setting in helping you out to configure this cluster. And of course, we got a lot of information available on JMS clustering on Red Hat side as well for JBoss. Thank you all for listening. See you. Okay. And as usual, We'll always like welcome your uh, feedback on support videos at informatica.com or you can all, always you know go ahead and use Twitter as well. Thank you.